Hi, it's Chester Tupper from Blue PK and Computer Training. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at an error that you sometimes might see uh, in Excel. It's the uh, div error. So we're going to look at how to deal with this error. We're also going to look at why it would appear on your spreadsheet. Well, very simply, uh, the div error appears when you try and divide something by zero. Uh, that's mathematically uh, not possible. You have to divide something by something. Dividing by zero will cause the error. So let's just look at this column here where we have some div errors. What we're doing is we're dividing column A by column B. It works on all of these occasions, but as soon as we divide by zero, we get the error. Or if we have a blank cell, we end up dividing by effectively zero. In this instance, you'll also get the div error here. So how can we deal with these scenarios. This looks pretty ugly on your spreadsheet, uh, but it may be on occasion that you know you have got blank cells or whatever. And rather than having this error turning up, you just want Excel either to ignore or just to leave the cell blank or maybe return a zero. Well, two ways you might uh, deal with this issue is to use one, the if error function, and that's available from Excel 2007. And the other option, if you have an earlier version of Excel, is just to use a standard if function. So let's just look at how to use the if error. If I just delete these options, you can see that it's actually wherever there's been a div error, it's left a blank. Let's see how that actually operates. The if error is very easy to use. Basically, you've got your value. So our value is the thing that you're interrogating or looking at to see if it will return an error. So we're saying this divided by this, okay, comma. The second argument is what you want to return if the value returns an error. So if I put in that two consecutive double speech marks, basically you're saying return nothing, or you might put a zero in instead. Let's just put nothing in. So it will do the calculation if an error isn't returned, so it will perform the value part of the function, or perform that, otherwise it will return nothing. Now if you wanted to use an if instead, what you could do, for example, is say equals if, you could say if column B contains a zero, that blue isn't turning out very well on the screen, is it? So let me just open this up so you can see what I'm doing. So if B3 contains a zero, then what you want to do is return either a zero or a blank or whatever. Otherwise, you want to perform the calculation. So that effectively does the same thing. I've just chosen to return the zero instead. Now, this is a fairly obvious example of where a div error might occur. But sometimes in our training, we it occurs in places you might not expect. So, for example, what we've got here is basically a list of sales figures for Bob, Bill, and Brenda. And then what we've done is summed up those sales figures for each month using a simple sum function. But then we want to find out what percentage January's figures is of the total figures. So what we've done is basically in this cell here, we've said B14 divided by I14. Now, let me just delete these formulas. That formula works fine for here. It's dividing that figure by that figure. If I copy this across, uh, instead of actually doing the same calculations for these numbers, it's returning the div error. Now, if you know much about XO, you'll realize why that's happening. If I click up here, you can see that as I copy the formula along, it's changing to the letters in both of my cell addresses. So what we end up with is we're dividing by empty cells. If I go along to this cell, you can see it's dividing by that cell. So what we need to do to overcome this error is to actually fix our reference to I14 so that when we copy across, our reference to I14 doesn't change. So what we do is we go back to our first formula. We click into the cell reference here. And I'm pressing F4 on my keyboard, and that fixes that reference by putting dollars before each character. And then I copy across and I no longer get that div error. Another scenario you might get it is where you've set up a spreadsheet with formulas 
already placed in it waiting for values to be entered. So for example, we have a call center here where Bob, Bill and Brenda work. And it's not until I put my numbers in that do I get rid of this div error because what I'm doing here is I'm dividing um, B18, uh, C18 by B18. Okay, and until I put the numbers in, I'm not getting, um, I, I'm getting a div error because I'm dividing by zero, I'm dividing by nothing again. So, you know, if I put some numbers in, 280, drop calls, 13, I get a perfectly respectable answer. Uh, but until then, I get these ugly div errors. So again, you might use uh, an if error function to get rid of this problem. So you could say very simply, once you've typed in your formula, just put in if error. You've already got your formula there. You just put an if error in front of it, and you say basically, return nothing if a div error occurs or any error occurs, in fact. Okay, so uh, div error problem occurs if you div if you're trying to divide something by zero, uh, even if you're inadvertently trying to divide divide something by zero, and also where you set up um, formulas in a spreadsheet where the values haven't yet been entered. It can appear pretty ugly if you've got loads of div errors. So a number of ways around it, if error or if, or it's a matter sometimes of just fixing a cell reference. So there'll be loads of other scenarios where the div error occurs, but hopefully you can see some ways of resolving them here. Okay, thank you very much.